Well, I'm Bob Claremountain. Um, I've mixed and produced a number of records over my career. It's been a pretty long time, over well over 40 years, and <laughs> started in the 70s. And uh, I used to produce. Now I'm basically mo mostly just mixing and working with Apogee quite a bit, working on plugins and help just advising a little bit on their, some of their gear. And uh, and I'm one. I have to say I'm one of the luckiest guys on the planet because I I grew up listening to great rock music, and I'm still mixing and listening to great rock music and sometimes actually getting paid for it. <laughs> When I was a teenager, I was a bass player. Um, various sort of bar bands and party party bands back in in my hometown of Greenwich, Connecticut, and and locally in Westchester County of New York. Some of the bars that we used to play in, and um, but I didn't really like being in a band that much. I didn't like depending on other musicians. Um, I didn't like being on the stage or having lights in my eyes. I was always a bit more interested in the in the behind the scenes thing. The last band I was in was doing a demo in a studio in New York City called Media Sound. And when I walked the first time I walked into that studio, it was the first time I'd ever been in a studio, I thought, geez, I could just live in this place. Um, well, as you can see, this is my home, so I I still I that actually dream came true. <laughs> but uh I the band split up and I got a job. I made friends with the people there, got a job there, and got a job as a runner, as a delivery boy. The first day I reported to, to work, uh, I reported to the shipping department and went out in a couple of deliveries. And then when I came back, the receptionist of the studio said, hey, are you that Clear Mountain kid? They're, they're looking for you upstairs, up in the office. You better get up there. And I thought, oh, great. You know, I probably got fired. I did. I screwed up of getting fired the first hour I'm here. So they said, look, we don't need a delivery boy, we need an assistant engineer, uh, so get down to Studio A. Okay, well, that was quick. I thought it would be like two or three years and it took about an hour. <laughs> and I wanted an assistant. My first session was a Duke Ellington session, the first thing. I, I wasn't the actual main assistant, I was the second assistant, so there was another guy kind of showing me what to do. For me, with the uh, the guy that's probably spent a million dollars on his recording studio, his mixing studio, I was kind of like, really? People can do all this at home now? <laughs> so uh, I was a little annoyed, but this is my wife's company. I thought, okay, f fair enough. This, this, you know, is that inevitable. This is where it's all going. And so I became a big supporter, of course, uh, right away. And the Duet's an amazing product that all, all their, their products, the ensembles, and and uh, I mean, I'm of course I on a professional level I use the the um, the Symphony I O Mark One and Mark Two. I got a bunch of them here, and um, but the home recording is is a good thing. I mean, a lot of amazing records have been made. You know, look at Billie Eilish in 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 her bedroom. On I don't know what she used an iPad or something, but uh, there's really no limits now as to what you can do. With a uh, without spending a whole lot of money, which I think is great because it just adds to the creative process, and it makes it makes recording available to a lot more people. Hopefully, once they finish recording, they'll bring it to me to mix it. <laughs>First of all, a few years ago, they decided to dive into the plug-in market because that seemed like where everything was going, and I thought that was a great idea. So they've come up with um, uh, emulations of the my favorite equalizer, the Pultec uh, EQ and uh, the MEQ and the EQP, which are fantastic. In fact, they're the only um, Pultec plugins that are legally able to use the name. Poltec because they're they're uh, they have a partnership with with Poltec uh, Techniques and uh, who who builds the, the hard hardware boxes and they've been approved they've been uh, um, S um, Steve Jackson who makes them has listened to them and, and approves of them uh, which is fantastic the 
the other plugins are incredible. They have a great version of the LA3A, which is one of my favorite limiters. It sounds basically exactly like it. Um, the and um, the Mod Comp is probably the closest compressor that I've come to the SSL bus compressor, which is fantastic. And they have a, they have a lot of great things. Plus, of course, they got some with my name on them. They have Clear Mountains Domain, which is designed to mimic what I what I've been doing for years in on my SSL and with a bunch of racks of delays and harmonizers and reverbs and all that kind of stuff, but all combined into into one plugin. Um, and then there's this thing called Clear Mountains Phases, which is an emulation of my favorite little phaser rack made by a company called MXR. And there's, there's these little modules that I've been using since the 70s. And um, so they've emulated that like pretty much precisely. And plus, at, we've added, with the help of a couple of brilliant programmers and a guy named Roger Rabindri at, at Apogee, it just, it does, real tape flanging and all kinds of really fun effects. It's very easy to use and, and just, I, I use it on almost everything I, I do now. The Apogee in the future will continue with their plugins and do more. I, I know all, already we're working on a, um, an, an Atmos version of um, Clear Mountain's Domain, which will have six outputs and a lot more delays. and. We're trying to make it, it's going to be a lot more complicated, but we're trying to simplify it at the same time, so it's a little easier to use. Um, the other thing that Apogee's been doing is getting into Atmos. And of course, this is this new format that is really designed for movies, and now it's, it's, it's been a, become a real popular thing with a lot of streaming services like Apple Music and Tidal and Amazon. Uh, and um, Everybody's mixing, you know, it's almost a requirement now that if you do a stereo mix, you have to d deliver a, an Atmos mix. And a lot of companies are going back and remixing their catalogs in, in this new version. I mean, it's, it's basically 12 channels, but um, you can hear it on headphones. Apple Music has a great version of it that combines it with head tracking so that you're really aware that there's, in, out of two, just a pair of headphones, that there's this thing around you, you know, this kind of uh, spatial audio thing happening. And, and it's great. I'm having a great time. I've mixed a bunch of albums for the last year.